You know why the audio in your videos doesn't sound professional? It's probably because you're using the wrong kind of microphone and you don't even know it. So in this video, I'm gonna help you stop using the wrong microphone. That was your cue. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna help you stop using the wrong microphone and start sounding professional. And then we'll put all this new knowledge to the test and shoot in the worst room in my house. This is a really bad environment to record audio. Now, this isn't a question of good versus bad microphones or how much you paid for your mic. It's about what type of mic you're using. So different mics are created for different reasons. And if you use a mic in a way that it wasn't designed for, your audio is probably going to sound pretty bad. It's like the time I was trying to hang a picture on the wall. I had had screws but I didn't have a screwdriver so I tried lots of different ways to get that screw into the wall but I did not have the right tool for the job and all of those tools I tried work just fine for their intended purpose but they're not designed for putting screws into walls. Now, I'm gonna take a guess that you're not shooting in a professional recording studio or a soundstage, because if you were, you could use a lot of different types of mics and they'd all sound fine. But since you're not, and I'm not, you have to worry about background noise and room reflections. But you also have to balance that with how your video looks. So let me explain. Background noise is just unwanted noise in your recording space, like the air conditioning or cars going by outside. And room reflections are the sound bouncing around the room and making echoes that kind of smear your sound. And they make you kind of hard to understand too. So while those are different things, one solution for them is the same. Get your mic closer to your mouth. It doesn't get rid of the background noise, but it reduces the impact of it. But you're not just making an audio recording. You have to worry about how you look as well. So maybe you're okay with a microphone in front of your face like this, or maybe you're not, and that's where the trade-offs start. So far, I've been using a pretty typical studio microphone. It's actually a really nice studio microphone, but anyway. And you'll notice that I am right up close to my mic. So while my YouTube studio has some sound treatment on the wall, so you can see them back there, I still have plenty of room reflections and background noise to deal with. If I move the mic farther away and then adjust the volume, you can really hear more of that room sound. And when the mic is close in, I get a much better sound. However, it's also blocking my face. And if you're okay with a microphone right there in front of you, then this is probably going to be your best sounding choice. But if not, we have some compromises to make. All right, let's just move this out of the way here. So many beginning content creators just use the built-in microphone on their phone or camera. And this can work okay if you're outside, especially if you're close to your camera. But it sounds pretty bad indoors because your mouth is too far away. And as you can hear right now, I am using the on-camera microphone for this camera that is probably two meters away, six feet, something like that, and it does not sound good. Now, if I turn to my B cam and use the microphone that is inside there, it's a little bit closer. It's maybe a meter away, maybe a little bit closer than that. The sound is a little better, but there's still a lot of room reflections. So you would think an on-camera shotgun microphone would be better, but it isn't actually that much better from this distance. Yes, a shotgun mic is more directional and it's gonna reject some of the sound coming from the sides and from the back, but it's still far away from your mouth and it will pick up lots of room reflections. Speaking of shotgun mics, probably what comes to mind is a movie set where someone's holding a, a shotgun mic on a boom pole and it's just out of the camera frame. And that's kind of what I'm doing right here, except it's in the frame so that you can see what I'm doing. And as you can hear, a shotgun mic is still picking up a lot of room echo and they work pretty well outdoors, but not so much indoors, at least not in small untreated rooms like content creators use. Yes, it is an improvement over an on-camera microphone for sure. So if you don't want any hint of a microphone in your shot, this is definitely one option. Although of course, raise it up so that it's actually out of the shot. Another option for a completely hidden microphone is to use a lavalier mic. Lavalier mics are tiny mics on wires that can be worn under your clothing, which is what I'm doing right now. However, lav mics can be a little tricky to use under clothing because they can pick up a lot of rustling noise when you move. Now, there are ways to tape them inside your clothing so you can minimize that rustling noise, but you really should play around with them and practice so that you don't ruin an important shoot. Let's see if I can get it rustling here. 
Now, keep in mind, if you are taping a lav mic into your clothing, it does take some time to prepare. So factor that into your shooting time. And also, you're kind of tied to the location you're in because you got cables running everywhere. Now, if you don't mind your viewers seeing your mic as long as it's not distracting, you could wear the lavalier mic on the outside of your clothing. By clipping it onto the outside, you don't have to worry about clothing rubbing against it as much, and the mic won't be muffled by your clothing either. By the way, you don't always have to put a lav mic on your chest. People sometimes clip them to collars or even run them through their hair. One cool trick is to wear a hat and tape the lav mic under the brim, and then you can then run the cable under the hat and down the back of your shirt. It's completely invisible on camera. And even better, it's actually closer to your mouth than a chest-mounted mic. So you'll kill some more background noise. I once suggested this to Ed Lawrence of the Film Booth channel because he often wears a hat and he said, Nah. nah. One thing to keep in mind though is that lav mics are omnidirectional. That means they pick up sound from all directions. And this also means that they might pick up more room sound than you might expect. The closer you can get it to your mouth, the better. Now you can use a lavalier mic with a really long cord plugged directly into your camera, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm pointing to my B-cam. Hello, B-cam. Just be careful not to walk away and tip your camera over or damage the mic. A safer way to do this, but of course it's more expensive, is to plug it into a wireless system so that you're not literally tied to your camera. You can get up and walk around with a wireless system without getting all tangled up in cables. And of course, most modern wireless mic systems have a built-in mic, like I'm using right now. You don't even need a lavalier mic at all if you don't mind your viewers seeing a a little box attached to your clothing. You can even tuck it inside your clothing, but then you have to worry about the same thing. Are you getting rustling sounds in your audio? Have you ever wondered why people clip lavalier mics to the center of their chest when they could just clip them to the collar? Because after all, a collar mic is way closer to your mouth than the chest mic, so it should sound better. And it does, as long as you don't move your head. The problem with putting a mic on your collar is that you're going to get huge volume shifts if you turn your head toward or away from the microphone. With a mic on your chest, the relative distance doesn't change much when you move your head from side to side. Now let me show you. So this is, you know, centered on my chest here and moving my head to the left and I'm moving my head to the right and the volume, I mean, there's a little bit of change, but it's not that big a deal. Now, let me move it to my collar. Okay, so if I just keep my head pointed directly at the camera, we're not gonna get much change in the volume. However, if I move my head to the left, we get a big change of volume. And if I move my head to the right, we get another big change of volume. So clipping it to the collar, maybe not the best solution. So as promised, in a minute, we are going to put all this newfound knowledge to the test and we are going to go into the worst room in my house, a really bad audio environment. But I wanted to tell you about one last type of microphone first. That's the the earpiece or the, the headset kind of microphone. And the nice thing about the earpiece microphone is that it sounds good and it's always the same distance from my mouth and it's really close to my mouth. So unlike a lavalier mic, there's not going to be any variation as I move my head around because the mic stays the same distance from my mouth. And of course you can see it, but it doesn't get in the way like some microphones. Whew, that was a lot of microphones. Now I have to go to the bathroom and you're coming with me. Now, the reason we're in the bathroom together, which is kind of awkward, by the way, is because this is a really bad environment to record audio in. Uh, if you've watched my earlier videos, I had previously said that my kitchen was the worst environment in my house, but I forgot about the bathroom. And the reason why bathrooms are so bad is because we've got all these hard reflective surfaces. We've got walls, we've got mirrors, we've got showers, and it's just all, and it's a very small room too, so the echoes, they just, really smear the audio. As you might have guessed, I'm using the built-in microphone on my camera here, and uh, I'm about a um, meter and a half away, and uh, I'm just guessing the audio sounds pretty bad. Okay, so now I am using an on-camera shotgun microphone, and as you can hear, the sound quality is not really improved. It might be cutting down on some of the echoes coming from behind the camera and to the sides, but the problem is, this room is just so echoey that we're picking up sounds from behind me and those are going right into the microphone. Now, I personally have never set up a boomed shotgun microphone in the bathroom before. I don't know if anyone else has either. This could be a first for humanity. I don't know, probably not. Now, obviously I have it in the shot just so that you can see it's there. If I were uh, really setting this up properly, I would raise it up a few inches so you couldn't see it. Now, whether this is practical or not, I don't know. There was a lot of rigging I had to set up for this. 
Now I have a studio microphone in the bathroom, which is a little weird. Yes, I realize that. However, I can get this microphone right up to my mouth and it really reduces the effect of the room echoes and the background noise because the direct signal from my voice is so much stronger. Yes, I'll be out in a minute. I'm not gonna be out in a minute. So now I'm using a lavalier microphone and uh, you might just be able to see it on my chest here. It's black on black though, so it's kind of hard to see. I've just got it clipped to my shirt. And so this microphone sounds way better than any on-camera solution because it's much closer to my mouth. Now I have a wireless system, which you can see right here. And uh, it's in the same position as I started with the lavalier mic though. So now you're gonna hear a frequency response difference because it's a different manufacturer. But in terms of room sound, in terms of reflection, it's probably pretty similar to the lav mic. Now I'm wearing the earpiece microphone I showed you earlier and the microphone is very close to my mouth. So the, uh, the direct signal from my voice is really uh, overpowering any of the room noise, background noise. I, I have the cable running down my back into a wireless transmitter system, which goes to the camera and then everything's recorded really nicely. All right, none of the microphones we tried in the bathroom completely got rid of the room sound, but I think it was pretty obvious that the closer the mic was to my mouth, the better the audio sounded. And it's a balancing act. How much microphone do you want your viewers to see versus how clear do you want your audio to be? So picking the right tool for the job makes all the difference. So I'm curious to hear what you think. Which mic did you think sounded best in the extreme bathroom test? Let me know in the comments. If you've watched some of my other recent videos, you'll notice I've been using this earpiece mic from Point Source Audio a lot lately. And I'm pretty sold on it for certain situations. And I, I did a full review of it, of course, which you can see right here. All right, I gotta jump in here because something is bugging me about this video, specifically about the boomed shotgun microphone. Now, I know I said it had a lot of room sound, but it actually sounded pretty good. And it was pretty close to my face, uh, you know, cause it was in the frame rather than being out of the frame, but that's definitely something that needs investigating. All right, let's finish up the video. Right here.